Hello, welcome back to Flare Prime. I'm Grant Coffey. In a recent episode of Flare Prime, we talked about the 10-step method. This was a chemical categorization process where we identified various aspects of a chemical to help us identify safe scene procedures. One of those steps was a pH test. pH stands for power of hydrogen. What does that really mean? It means hydrogen ion concentrations in solution. A solution of something that's very corrosive, damaging to both materials and humans. We call that corrosivity, and it goes from a scale of zero, one end, to 14 at the other end. Acids lie at the zero end of the scale. Alkalins lie at the 14 end of the scale. They will both hurt you. Let me use a different example. Dry ice will burn you. It's cold. The opposite is heat. A hot burner will burn you. They're opposites, yet they're both dangerous to you. In the middle of 14 and zero is seven. Neutral is where we want to get it. Think of water as neutral, and you'll see on that scale, on the graphic, that water is right in the middle. We want to try to get something to neutral. Here's why. Chemical reactions, industrial processes, medicine, agricultural, cooking, even your health, blood chemistry, all relies on having a pH pretty close to that neutral. We like to try to get it there into that neutral state as much as possible. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you'll see as common acids and alkalins. One of the as, uh, alkalins that you will see is sitting right here, it's Drano, a drain cleaner. Drain cleaner is basically on the alkaline end, a caustic soda, it will turn pH paper blue, very soapy feel, but it will really burn you. But what I want to talk about a little bit more are acids, because acids are at the zero end of the scale. They'll turn pH paper red, they're tart, um, sour, and very, very strong. This is a good example on the table of muriatic acid or brick cleaner. That's hydrochloric acid. That's a very strong industrial acid. Most of the strongest industrial acids are inorganic. What that means is they don't have carbon in them. Organic acids, on the other hand, will have carbon. They can burn. But the most common industrial acids are inorganic. That means they don't burn. But that's really not the problem because they have other characteristics like they can make other things heat up and burn because every time they fall on something, they'll create a chemical reaction, releasing heat, probably causing a fire that way. But there's some other hazards. Picric acid, for example, can be explosive. Sulfuric acid can be oxidizing. Hydrofluoric acid, very toxic. So in the hazmat field, we have a statement that says dilution is a solution to pollution. That just means washing stuff away, diluting it to where it's not harmful anymore. That will not work in the case of caustics. Adding a lot of water to some caustics will not dilute it to where it's not hazardous anymore. Let's demonstrate that right here. Now I'm going to show you with a quick little demo that dilution is not the solution to pollution for caustics. You can't dilute them to where you get it up to that neutral that I was talking about and make it safe. So let's simulate a spill of a, of a caustic. This is going to be an acid. We're going to spill 100 gallons. That's a 100 gallon spill on the road. Let's take a pH of it, which it should be turning this orange or red. Pretty orange there. Put it down by the pH paper. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get that a little bit lighter down to maybe a little bit more towards a lighter color, a green. The water here is a little acidic, so I'm going to put it right down there. We're going to try to dilute this. And let's see if they change the color any by putting more water into it. So the firefighters arrive, they think that they just dilute this and it'll be nice. They just wash it away. That won't happen with a caustic. Now I've got 200 gallons of water in the spill. Let's see if it's changed at all. And you'll see, I'll hold them up right together. It's the same color. Let's do it one more time. Let's take another 100 gallons of water from a tender, arrives on scene, makes the spill. Now 300 total gallons of acid. We're thinking we're gonna make it neutral. I'll just show you. There is not a change at all. You can go to 1,000 gallons, it won't change it even one number. That's not the solution to diluting a caustic. We have to put the opposite in. Let's take the same. 100 gallon spill. Let's do it a little different here. We're going to now, we don't need to pH it, we're going to use the same color paper because we didn't change it at all. Let's just take some of the opposite. Some bicarb of soda, mix it around a little bit. Notice I have not increased the spill at all. I may have emulsified it a little bit. Let's take a little pH of this one and see if we've changed it at all. As you can see now, see how green that is? That's actually to a pH of about seven, neutral. 
Notice that. I have 100 gallons of the same spill. I've neutralized it. I have not tried to dilute it. You can't dilute your caustics to make them safe. Chemical characteristics are really the name of the game. Identifying those help you identify safe scene operation. pH is just one of them. Here at FLIR, we want to provide you with tools and knowledge you can use today. At the end of this episode is a good pH download that we want you to go to. It's flir.com slash prime. Thank you again for watching another episode of FLIR Prime.